In the garden at 24 Timinitz Kego Street, you will find a neo-Renaissance brick villa, which now houses the Book Art Museum. Built at the end of the 19th century, it was originally intended as factory offices, but was eventually occupied by Henrik Groman, one of the four sons of the Łódź factory owner Ludwig Groman. The villa began its film career in the late 1960s, when it was transformed into Polish Embassy in Belgrade in the film How I Unleashed World War II, directed by Tadeusz Chmielewski. Here, a completely drunk Franek Dolas, played by Marian Kociniak, is carried in by Yugoslav Shepherds and, due to being unconscious, is declared dead. However, following in the footsteps of Oscar-winning filmmakers, it's another location associated with Andrzej Wajda's adaptation of Raymond's novel Promised Land, but this time not in the film version, but in the TV series version. Vida decided to make the television version for two reasons. The huge success of the film version and the desire to use footage that had not been able to be shown in the first cut. So they created a four-part series with each part lasting a little less than an hour. In the TV series, the ballroom, also known as the music room of the Groman Villa, has been arranged as the living room of the residents of Kazimierz and Nina Trawinski. Plot omitted from the film shows the relationship between the spouses. Trawinski enters a tastefully furnished living room where his beautiful and young wife, played by Teresa Budzisz-Krzyżanowska, is working on a painting accompanied by a violinist. Nina, a somewhat detached art lover, presents her husband with a beautiful tabletop she commissioned from a Florentine artist, adding that she bought it almost for nothing, only 2,000 lira. She has no idea of her husband's financial troubles, although seeing him distressed, she asks if he is all right. Travinsky, trying to hide from her the fact that they are on the brink of bankruptcy, blames the foul weather for his foul mood. As he kisses his wife goodbye, he asks her to wish him luck and leaves. Along with him, we move to Buchholz factory, where Travinsky begs Karol Borowiecki, who manages the factory, for a loan. However, Borowiecki refuses, while at the same time suggesting to the bankrupt that he should, like other insolvent factory owners, set fire to his factory so that the money he receives from the insurance will allow him to get back on his feet. Although coming from the Polish nobility, who always stands on the side of the law, Travinsky doesn't support such thieving advances, however this idea begins to grow on him. Leaving the factory, he meets Halpern, a Jew who is fascinated by Wuch and its rapid development. Halpern is the author of perhaps the most famous quote from The Promised Land. I want my Wuch to grow, to have magnificent palaces, beautiful gardens, to have great traffic, great trade and great money. Unquote. Desperate, Travinsky is fed up with Wuch, refers to it as a thieving city, and says that of all the commandments, which does not respect one, do not steal. The background of this conversation is the Buchholz factory, today Andel's hotel and the surrounding workers' houses. Travinsky returns home, so we move again to the ballroom of the Groman Villa. Trying to fill out his wife's attitude, he tells her that one of the factory owners arranged the fire to get the money from insurance. However, Nina calls it a crime, and burying the last rays of hope in Travinsky, adds that she had always appreciated him for his kindness and noble behavior. Totally unaware of the weight of her own words, she adds that it is impossible to live without acting ethically, but only to die at most. Here, Andrzej Wajda decided to use these words and make Travinsky's character far more tragic than Raymond saw it in the novel. In the novel, a bankrupt factory owner manages to get another loan to get out of his problems, thus showing that honesty pays off after all. Meanwhile, in the TV series, a heartbroken Travinsky shoots himself in the head and commits suicide. This incident firmly highlights the film's overtones, that being an honest man with principles means there is no chance of survival 
in the ruthless world of predatory capitalists. Without excessive splendor, the Travinsky residence living room into which the ballroom of the Groman villa is transformed is supposed to testify to the good taste of its owners. After all, they come from Polish nobility, with its traditions, their status, behavior, and choices are not novu riche. Standing slightly in opposition to such figures are the factory owner Miller, played by Franciszek Pieczka with his magnificent lavish palace, built not to live in, the factory owner and his family still live in an old cottage, but to emphasize his high financial status. The Travinsky's house is soaked with the spirit of art, and the two of them, especially Nina, seem to have a high awareness of the objects around them. Not for their material value, but for their actual beauty. The villa building carries a difficult history. The Groman family used it until World War II, then it became a part of the state-owned Union Tex factory complex. The industry's collapse condemned the residents to gradual progressive degradation. The Art Book Museum, established in 1993 by the Correspondence des Arts Foundation, founded in 1990 by Janusz and Jadwiga Tryzna, rescued it from further deterioration. Besides organizing exhibitions and workshops on printing, papermaking and bookbinding, museum supports all activities related to art books and owns a unique collection of printing machines, type making machines and a unique collection of stencils and production equipment from the Warsaw Font Foundry.